the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Uh, we are in a special meeting with our uh, dear son and friend, Manu. And I think uh, many had seen the video we made before. And um, we all love Manu and we pray for him. And he pray for the whole world. Manu originally is Emmanuel, but I would love uh, to let him present himself and his story. Sure, thank you, Abuna. Um, my real name is Emmanuel Gali, nickname Mano. Um, I had a car accident at the age of 19. I was in second year of college. Um, I was studying engineering at American University in Cairo. The car accident uh, resulted in a, in a cut in the spinal cord, which resulted in complete paraplegia, um, which means it's full paralysis in the whole body from the neck down and um, all of my body. So. Nothing in my body moves except for my neck, left and right, up and down. And I stayed for a year and three months. I couldn't speak at all uh, till I went to Germany. After this, they replaced the, um, the little metal tube in my throat so I can speak and breathe at the same time. This was in 2003, exactly 11 years and five months ago to date. And I'm, I was 19 and five months back then, and I'm currently 31 years old next month. Okay, happy birthday. <laughs> um, okay, in your, in your condition, people may think that uh, you should be angry at God and you should suffer from doubts and, and many obsessions. And I think many of the atheists in this world nowadays believe that God is not kind as Christianity declare because of such misery and suffering people suffer of. What do you say for this? Well, before my accident, I, I didn't have, a, well, I knew about God. I didn't have a personal relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. So I knew that God was like, that God was, uh, was loving and um, that he cared for his people and he cared for his flock as the Bible uh, mentions it. But I was not one of Jesus' followers. I just knew about God, but I had no relationship with him or any active service in church or any participation in, it as, in church as just attend a service and I leave. So I knew that people living a Christian life with God, they should be protected by God's love. Even if any harms happen to them, they are protected by God. And God forbid, if, the, if they die, they will be with God at the end. But I knew that I was not a follower of Jesus Christ. So I know that God does not harm people, as it says in the book of James, chapter 1 and verse 13, that um, God does not harm, God does not cause evil and does not harm by evil. And it's not a way of a living father, any father, he wouldn't teach his children by breaking their arm or breaking one of the ribs in order to teach them a lesson. God might allow for something to happen in order for his glory to be revealed, but in the same time, his hand is actually surrounding the whole environment and surrounding this situation to pass through it. So I knew that I was not living the 19 years I lived before the accident with God. So the change was that I knew that my life was going to end miserably if I, I would have died that day and I would have went uh, in hell uh, if I would have died on this day. So I decided and I said, well, I didn't live with God all these years, so why not to try to live for Him? You know, the Word offered for me nothing and, and I wasn't a bad person. I didn't uh, smoke or get drunk or go on pubs or do whatever. I was a straight, straight man going from the university to my house to the church sometimes, and that was it. So I wanted to live the Christian life with God, and after I chose to live the Christian life with God, that's when I found a great relief and a great peace in my life. Yeah. Okay, many people do not believe that walking around and uh, just moving their hands, uh, it's a gift. I think you, one day, you felt it when you lost it. What, what, do you, what do you say to the people who 
always living their life and they never thank God or praise Him for such usual gifts. The problem is that we take our life for granted. Yeah. And we never think that any, anything such as this or dreadful as this would ever come. Mm. Personally, before the accident, I never saw a quadriplegic. I saw a hemiplegic, which means that their lower limb is paralyzed, and I still regard such a person yeah. as a fully functioning human being. But we walk around every day, we wash our face, we go down to our work, university, or whatever, thinking that this is the normal thing that we're going to do. But after being paralyzed for such a long time now, I cannot wash my own face, I cannot brush my teeth, I cannot shave for myself, I cannot even scratch in my eye if there is anything that came on my eye or a fly stands on me. So I tell the youth when I speak with them, thank God that you can even breathe on your own without any breathing aids. Because I was for three or four or five months, I believe, on, on um, breathing aids in order for me to breathe normally and the amount of infection that I get daily, on a daily basis, is tremendous. Yeah. You are already in a God's gift that you are walking on your feet by your own will and moving your own arms and your own will, that you're taking your life for granted for this and you're not realizing that this is a miracle in itself that you're living, controlling your own life. Yeah. Which is something that I'm deprived of for 11 years now and five months. When somebody stays for like few hours waiting for something to happen, they feel bored and they started to nag and making problems. And while you are waiting for whatever happened for a whole day, how can you spend your day? And in our eyes, you do nothing. So how can you spend your day? My day is filled with activities all the time. Thank God. Um, well, in, in the morning, of course, I take care of the physical body needs, like how to washing my face and brushing my teeth and so on and so forth. And usually twice a week, I have a physiotherapy session to move any, uh, the muscle tone in my body. Of course, nothing in my body moves, but in order to keep yeah. the muscle tones alive. So that happens twice a week. And uh, in the remaining time, I take my quiet time with God every day, which is the essential thing that I do. And I do that through the computer. Um, I, I use a voice recognition program, mm. because that's the only way I can use it, the computer. So um, my, my caregiver would put the headset on my face and my glasses, of course. And the headset is with a mic. And she has to start the voice program. And once she starts the voice program, I control the computer all the programs within the computer, and that's how I read the Bible. I, I take my own time to pray um, secretly with, with God. I close my door and take my prayer, and then I start reading in the Bible. I have an electronic Bible version on my computer. I read the Bible in English, and yeah. I read the NIV Bible, which is already self-explanatory than the King James or the New King James. Uh, and then after this, I'm, I'm, I also have my studies. I'm. Um, a student in, in a university called the University of Phoenix Online in Arizona. And I have been afflicted with this university ever since 2006. I graduated with one university degree in uh, the end of 2008. And I only have one course left to finish the second degree, also with the University of Phoenix. Uh, and that's my bachelor degree. It's called the Bachelor of Science in Management that I'm currently pursuing. Just one more course and I'll be done with it. Um, I'm not sure if I'll, fin I'll go to the Masters or not, maybe. But I prefer to give all my time for, for God's service. I also have the most important thing that in my life that I do is I get invited to church meetings, mainly youth uh, meetings from the age of 18 to 30 that I get invited to speak in. And uh, that's that's what takes most of my time, you know, to prepare for the service and um, mentally and physically. And I go out, of course, a lot of times if I get invited to a wedding or we go on outing with my friends. So my, my day is pretty packed. Thank God, thank God. That's nice. Uh, mentioning uh, the youth meetings, uh, in my opinion, I could see that there is a real problem with the youth meeting in the Coptic Church. Um, in Egypt and outside Egypt, because most of the youth left the church or they left the meetings. They are not happy with the, with the regular meeting. 
And I could see that if uh, in the parable given by the Lord himself, he went after the lost sheep. We are losing hundreds or thousands. So in your opinion, what are the reasons behind this problem? Why youth are not happy with the regular meetings in the church? Maybe sometimes it's concerned about the, the servants in these meetings, that they're not making the meeting interesting enough or they're not using live examples in the Bible and uh, live stories or examples. Yeah. They might be reciting the Bible verses, which anyone can read this on their own. So yeah. maybe they don't find the need for them to go to church to listen to this. And also maybe the lack of activities or services that they need to actually get the youth involved in, that they need to have an active ministry yeah. serving the people and knowing how to live the living Bible first yeah. and how to, to go out of the church to, to other people um, that don't know anything about God even though they're Christians. Maybe this is not motivating the, the youth enough. I believe more conferences needs to be done to the youth in order to get them more active and, uh, and more into the service. I believe this is one of the most crucial things with the youth specifically. Yeah. That's a nice one. Okay, uh, also uh, you mentioned that part of your daily life you spent with the computer or the media and you are very good in this. Um, we are suffering from the abuse of misuse of media in very bad thing. I mean many of the youth do not use the media or computer in your such a good way, but they use it in pornography, in bad things. What do you say for this? What do you tell people take care of? Well, everything has a double-edged sword. Of yeah. course, the internet is, is a great source for knowledge and it's a great source for sin as well. Mm. Um, the use of the internet for me was I got an online degree university that I couldn't get elsewhere I mean, because I cannot go to a physical campus. Yeah. And also there is a lot of ministries um, that is done through the internet as well. Like you can listen to a live sermon through the internet and on, on YouTube. And that's why I have a YouTube channel also and I have a Facebook group that I use for ministry on a daily basis, specifically the, the Facebook group. Um, the only way to fight the, the sin is to get closer to God and get closer to the Word of God. And I believe getting closer to the light eliminates the darkness. And knowing the Word of God will, will help to enlighten your mind and will not feel the urge to go to something like pornography or to have the need for this. Yeah. For being in a close relationship with God eliminates anything else that is not pure or is not godly. Mm -hmm. That's the only way to fight. To fight, to fight evil is to, to be toward the good side. Yeah. You mentioned also that in your daily program, you're enjoying some time with the Lord in quiet time, some other time with uh, listening and studying. And, but uh, as far as I know, you, in many days, you suffer a lot taking Physical usual lines. breaths or... or so, in such time of suffering, more than the usual, how can you set your mind? How, what, what way you can accept this? Well, some days, of course, are very hard than other days. Some days I, I wake up, I cannot breathe for the entire day, and I have to get the chest doctor to, or the respiratory doctor to see what's wrong with my chest and my lungs. And Sometimes there are blocks for several days, and. Sometimes if I get invited to a service, I will have to cancel it because physical-wise, I cannot function. And uh, I'm, I'm prone to get infections than anyone else because of the catheter in my throat and the, the urine catheter as well. And of course, because I'm bedridden all the time. Yeah. So many, many days there are complications. Every day actually for me is very different. I don't mention this, of course, all the time yeah. when, I, when I go to a meeting because I'm supposed to be spreading the, Giving hope. Yes, <laughs> I, the message of God. Yeah. So I deduct this from, um, from my talks usually, but it, it's something inevitable yani, that you cannot live without, and I cannot live without. 
Yeah. So yes, of course, there are complications every day. I don't know how it will end, but I know in whom hands I trust, and I trust in God, and I know that trusting in God, He will not let me go to perish, or He will not let me see something that is beyond my my own capacity. Even though it, it might be might be hard sometimes, but I still believe that at the end of the day, I am in the hands of the Lord. Can you pray or cry praying in any way at that time? Yes, of course. You do? All the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. And I know that this is, I know inside of me, deep down inside of me, that this is not the end. Even if this is the end, I know that the Lord will, will be done. I stick by what, what Job said, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the, the name of the Lord be glorified. story mentioned in, in the Gospel of St. John related to some body who were paralyzed for like 38 years. And he was waiting for the water, as you know, to be moved so he may be healed. But it came a minute that the Lord appeared to him and he gave him the miracle he waited for in a different way. So do you think that people may uh, wait for a specific way of God's interference? Is it good to just wait or hope for a special way of miraculous change or better to surrender and leave it to God? Um, I think sometimes people try to box God in, uh, in one way or form. Um, but what I learned on a personal basis is that God can move in any direction, in any way, regardless. It could be through medicine, and it could be through miraculous healing done by God Himself. So, so yes, God uses the medicine to heal people, and God uses miraculous signs done by Him or the saints or the angels to heal people. So, so yes, of course, you have to surrender to the will of God, not to your own will or the way that you want a specific miracle to happen. Yeah. Okay, I have another question. Because of I had seen many people suffering from their problems or trials or accidents and they kept praying for a long time and they th thought that there is no reply. So they lost their faith or their hope. And we are trying to tell them that just wait again and God is there, God is kind, He is listening. He can do different things. But you know, for many of these people, they just lose, lost their faith. What do you say? I usually do two things, or hold on to two things. First promise is in Hebrews 11.1, 1, meaning that I know that there is the healing is coming. Yeah. True, I didn't see myself healed yet, but I know who holds the promise, and this is God. And I know that God is not a man, so he would not lie. I know that God doesn't change his words. Of course, this is hard, yeah. specifically after 11 years and five months. Maybe this was acceptable in the first year or two. Yeah. But after more than a decade now, it, be it becomes harder by one time grows by. But every single time when I get down or downcast, and specifically in this point, I ask the Lord for a sign. Show me why. Is this any productive in the world that I'm still staying like this? Mm. And what's the purpose for me staying like this if there is not much people getting their lives changed or, or that I'm not doing any change in the world? And um, if there is no reason for me to, to be like, to be in this position, either heal me or take me to be with you. Mm. And not once have I asked this from the Lord, that the Lord would show me in the Bible, in my daily biblical reading, and I read the Bible in order. I don't jump from, from yes. one book to the other. Yes. The Lord will give me the answer from my daily biblical reading that usually it's something related to healing. And I will find a message on Facebook from someone that I don't know in my group that their life got changed when they saw yeah a video of me. Yeah, let me uh, say this, that yes. you are of a much great uh, benefit than millions of youth in your age, because maybe they spend their life 
with no meaning, with no benefit, with no goal. But at least you are serving God in many ways and people may be affected by your message much more than any sermon coming from somebody like me. So definitely you have a great mission. Well, I get really encouraged when I find, because people day by day, I, I actually get surprised that people still view my videos for the first time. Yeah. And I find a message from someone saying that you just saw your video was Abuna Dawood or a video that uh, in a church meeting and we got inspired and our lives got changed that yes. truly we are taking a life for granted. And we thought that we have problems when, when we looked at you, we see that. So you said you hold to two things. One thing, it, the meaning of faith that it's just trust the unseen and you keep this hope up that God is there and He is listening and He will choose the right time and the right reply. What is the other point in this? You holding to one thing else? The, the other promise is when I, when I find people encouraging me oh, that okay. my message is still yeah. you changing their lives. The power of service. Yes. And okay. of course, I speak with church leaders, yeah. servants. Very good. Yes. Very good. Okay. In your uh, trial, many people shared you in a way. They loved you and they were of some help. So, do you think that trials may not only positively affect the one who is into the problem, but also it may affect positively the people living around him? I mean that some problem may happen to somebody, but spiritually the people living around him gets more to know God through him. Is yes. that your case? Yes, this happens. I didn't know that this happens, but I will find still messages from people that I personally know and people that I don't know that will send me messages on also on Facebook or yeah. on my cell phone saying that in our down, down times, when we are in a down time, then, and we remember you when yeah. we pray, we yes. get encouraged that there is someone in a much deficient uh, position than ourselves and is still encouraged by the Lord. Okay. Um, maybe I meant another point that somebody, when he come trying to help you in any way, that adds to his spiritual fortune in his relationship with God. So you are the source of gifts to many people, not only the spiritual messages, but also uh, the merciful help they can give you in any way. Okay, let me ask another question. Um, I knew that you have something to do with the politics. You love Egypt and you shared in the last few years in a way in this, you know, revolution and after re revolution and the changes happened in our country. So, please tell me something about it. I, I always wanted to go to the elections to vote myself, but I couldn't, I couldn't do so because they, we had some limitations that wouldn't allow someone paralyzed to go into, um, yeah. to, to vote him, himself. But last year, in, in May 2014, I decided to go regardless, the case is, and I wow. decided to, to present my case, whatever the, the outcomes might be. If they refuse, I would document this and I say I, I tried to vote and they refused yeah. for me to vote. And I got one of my friends, he's a professional photographer with me to record the whole day on his camera. And I, I went there, nobody objected. And uh, actually I went inside um, the voting room. The, the judge was, the, was there, they were very helpful. They took my fingerprint. They put it next to my I, I governmental ID number. The judge himself asked me, who do you want to vote for? I told him, he made a check mark. And I stayed there till, I, till he went and he put it inside the box in front of me. And then they put my finger in the uh, phosphoric ink so you so can vote again. And I, this was recorded on live television. On that same day, there was a, uh, an Arabic live channel called the Arabian News. And they recorded this. Um, it, it, it takes me six hours for me to get prepared find one of my friends to drive me there, find one of my friends to push the chair. It's a hassle for me to go down in any given day or circumstances. But I wanted to make a difference in the country. And I wanted to go the very first day and document this. 
And I spread all the pictures on Facebook to say, hey, there are paralyzed people in the country, completely disabled, wanting to make a difference. So please go down and cast your vote as well. Yeah, that's a great message. So you, uh, you inspired many of the disabled to share, I think. I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. Okay, uh, going back to, to the Bible. I know you love the Bible and the Bible is your, we may consider your intimate friend and... Source of inspiration. Yeah. So, um, can you understand the Bible by yourself always or sometimes you need some commentaries or some explanations? How do you read the Bible? I know technically how do you read it, but you know I... Well, first I pray for the Lord to open my eyes to understand the meaning behind the text that I'm reading. So I take a lot of time praying before reading in the Bible. And my reading is in the NIV version, which is pretty much self-explanatory. And if there's some concept that I don't understand, of course I will call some of the church leaders to explain it to me. And, and we stay on the phone till I understand the concept or maybe some of them will visit me and explain something. Very good. And of course watching sermons about specific chapters in the Bible that yeah. explains the, the idea behind the, the passage. Yeah.